Hi, I'm Sean Dahlquist. I'm back at Waters West and today we'll be tying this pattern right here. It's sort of a hair wing spider. I call it Paul's Stilly Skunk. So this fly uh, is not my pattern. It uh, was developed by a guy I used to fish with and when he showed it to me I I loved it instantly. It uh, when he showed it to me, he told me how there's only thread at the very front of the fly, and I was new to fly fishing and new to fly tying, and I had no idea how that was done. So uh, I'll be describing that. And this is a great fly for summer steelhead, fall fishing, and in smaller sizes, it's a, it's a great cutthroat fly. I've caught a lot of cutthroat on it. Okay, so where you start your thread you're going to want to start it maybe a little further back than you normally would because the way that this fly is finished there's actually a collar and then your hair wing and then another collar over top of that so you're going to want to give yourself plenty of room so for the underbody of this fly it's small or fine flat silver tinsel get that started smooth and you're going to want to cut a pretty good length of this uh, a foot or maybe more of it just because you're going to go all the way down and back So you're going to want to leave a couple wraps for your tag end. So maybe at about the point of the hook and then start coming back up. Take off a couple wraps. Secure that. You can snap it off or cut it off. One of the things I really like about this fly, just besides the fact that it looks really cool, is that all the materials are super cheap and you can find them anywhere it's just uh, tinsel floss cattail and ring neck pheasant so it's all stuff that's pretty easy to get so for the tail on this um, cattail uh, when I'm using cattail I like to use the, st uh, the hairs at the very tip they're a little more translucent they seem to kind of get dull as you go down the tail but at the very tip um, they're nice and shiny and to make this tail you can stack the hair sometimes depending on how twisted and kinky the calf tail fibers are you can you might you might be able to stack them but I just usually do a hand stack Take out some of the under fur there. You don't need a real big clump. Okay. And for the length, it's up to you. Maybe a little bit past the bend of the hook just to the bend looks fine okay. 
I like to put just a dab of cement there on the butt ends just to keep everything locked in. So that goes right on top with a couple wraps. And then, like I said, the only thread wraps are going to be right at the head of the fly. Everything else is going to be held in place uh, with the floss for the body. So for the rib, it's going to be its wire. So you just make a loop out of your wire, tie it on the underside, a couple more wraps. And all these wraps you can eventually take off when you get back to the head of the fly with the floss. So, got your loop on the bottom, wire loop, and your tail on the top. And then this uh, floss is just Danville's flat wax nylon. It's it works the best for this. It's it's much shinier and much brighter than some of the Japanese silks or the fancier silks. This is my favorite type of silk for this fly. So again, a couple more that you can take off right at the end, and then you just start binding everything down. This takes a little bit of time and you got to make sure that you keep all your calf tail on the top seated where it's supposed to and your wire loop on the bottom so that the body stays nice and smooth. Just kind of have to rock it back in place every once in a while. And for the length of floss you want to do give yourself plenty because you'd hate to be coming back up and not have enough. an eye on it. So that should be enough that you still have your tag out back and then start wrapping back up. It's not super critical to have this body perfectly smooth because you'll see in a minute when the, you bring up the rib what we do. So now at this point you can take some of those wraps off. And that way you have a, you don't have too many lumps up there. Throw a few back on, everything's in place. Okay, so for the rib here, you take your loop and just like you might do for splitting floss to make a dubbed body, 
you're just going to use this wire but the wire is going to go over as a rib so just start inserting the dubbing and whatever kind you can use rabbit you can use goat you can use seal if you have it you can use any of the synthetics those actually look really good on this because this is a really bright fly so you've got that silver tinsel underbody you've got this really bright uh, floss and then you have your dubbing sparkling over the top it's really it's really a bright fly Yeah, my my friend Paul, he was really a creative fly tire. And the last time I talked to him about this pattern, he had forgotten all about it and said he doesn't even tie it anymore just because it takes too long. And he was on to experimenting with other things. But I've been fishing with this fly for about 15 years. It's one of my favorites. So one of the tricky things about this fly is when you're spinning that, you got to keep an eye on it. Make sure that the dubbing is being locked in, but you also don't want to twist it too much that it snaps off at the tie-in point. So we're okay there. So take one around and then start ribbing forward. And it's up to you how many. I typically on my steelhead flies, I'll, you kind of shoot for the five evenly spaced uh, wraps for your rib but on this one I do a couple more so six or seven just because I like that buggy dubbing wrapped in there in the wire okay that secure and then you can take a little dubbing brush and kind of pick it out it just has a really neat look okay now for the first for the colors on this fly I'm just using uh, Ring neck pheasant dyed black. It's got a nice shape to it. And this is a this is kind of a spidery fly, so I like I like the fibers to go kind of envelop the whole fly. Okay, so that should be good for the first collar. Pinch it back if you have to. 
kind of corral it. And then for the wing, we're also doing calf tail. Uh, this one's just natural. And one of the things that Paul used to do on this fly was uh, he would look for, sometimes there's a natural curve to the hair on the calf tail. And so you can look for that and use it and kind of curve it over the back of the body like that. So I'm going to try to do that here. And again, you don't need a real full wing on this, just a little splash of white over the top. And you can kind of just hand stack it. And the length on that, maybe halfway, on the halfway point of the tail. And again, just a little touch of head cement on the butt ends. short ones you can take them out okay that looks all right and then one more collar over top and you want to get your second collar maybe the fibers a little bit longer than the first one that you put on. Okay. Secure it alongside. Start wrapping over, sweeping the fibers back as you go. You can pre-fold these too if you're more comfortable with that. Give it the McNeese special. A little spit. finish and that is what I call Paul's Steely Skunk so the technique of using the wire dubbing loop to create a rib and sort of a dubbing hackle um, I thought it was really neat on this pattern and you can use the same technique like I did here on this little cutthroat streamer with the sort of the orange body and the yellow dubbing spun in the wire loop. Totally different fly, totally different look but using the same uh, technique.